Okay, now we're going to look at a special type of rational um, function, the absolute value rational function. And we've already looked at it when it wasn't one-sided. And as you can see by the parent graph, as you look left and right, the limit doesn't exist because there's this big gap between the left and the right side. But now we're going to examine what happens when we look from just one-sided. As we come from the left side, we'll be down here. Let's call that negative 2. And coming from the right side, we'll be up there. And we'll call that positive 2. So the, oops, those are two different he heights, right? But if we only care about the left side, then we would say, for this particular function, we would say the answer is negative 2. So let's go ahead and do an example. Oh, and I'm very, very silly because I would, <laughs> never mind. Uh, and, uh, well, that's that's not true. If there would be a number on the outside of here that gets pulled out, that's when you would have it up here at 2 and down here at negative 2. So the example that I'm show, showing you will be the basic parent function, where the basic parent function, this is 1 and this is negative 1. However, we have been shifted over positive 2. So that's what that graph looks like. And if it wasn't one-sided, it would also look like that. So we shifted this function to the right 2, 1, 2, and then we graphed the graph, the parent graph, and then now we're going to look. As we approach 2 from the left side, well, what is that height down there? Well, that height is negative 1. So let's look at one from the right side. I think I just used the exact same one. Same graph. But now we're coming from the right side. And remember the left side looked like this. From the right side, we're up there at positive one. So that is how you do the absolute value. Let's show you one where you might have to do a little bit more work. So here we have the limit as x approaches negative, negative 3 from the right. So negative 3 from the right is over here. So we're going to be looking at this part of the graph. In the numerator, though, we have 3x plus 9. They both share a 3. So the first thing you're going to do is factor out that 3. And then the numerator agrees that um, both of those expressions, what zeroes out uh, the 3 is a negative 3. So we have to shift this graph negative 3, 1, 2, negative 3 right there. But the slope now, we factored out a 3. Think about that as slope. In this case, not really slope, but we had to go up 3 and down negative 3. And this number impacts how far you go away from the x-axis. And then as we look from the right, what will be the height? Well, that height is 3. So there's your answer right there. Let's try another one. Now we have, oh, we have a negative graph. We haven't talked about the negative graph. Well, remember, when you uh, have, have a negative, that's a reflection. So if you had the basic parent graph and you reflected it, well, actually, the basic parent graph, this would be there, this would be there. And if you reflected it, whoops, those two would reflect over the x-axis and would look like this. So because that's going to be negative, that parent graph is going to look more like that. In the denominator, now the absolute value is in the denominator. It doesn't change what we do, but they both share a 2 in common, so we're going to factor out a 2. And then look at what we have. We now have a 1 half. So this is positive 1 half. This is negative 1 half. And then as we look at, as we approach this limit, 
um, and we shifted everything over to one. One would be right there. And as we look at it from the left, oh, we're now up here. That's a positive value. So that answer right there should be positive one half. All right. And I think that is it for the absolute value one. Yep, that's it.